What is going on, boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen? The ACMJ is gamer here. Uh, we're back at it again with some more uh, Assassin's Creed Valhalla news. Um, I myself recently have I've been getting kind of tired of reading about you know the same things, um, just because there was so little information. I mean, I mean, there was a lot of information that came out originally, but there's been so much information that's been recycled that it's kind of like, eh, I don't really know if I should talk about this. Um, but that's mainly because the gaming industry news wise has been kind of, you know, eh, over the past couple of months. Um, the recent, most recent big thing I could think of was the last of us scandal. And then there was the, uh, the uh, announcement for Valhalla and the Ghost of Tsushima just came out, and I did a breakdown of that in my previous live stream. Um, but it's been a minute since we've seen uh, some new information. Um, and so this uh, Kotaku article by Stephen Totilo, sorry if I'm uh, messing that up, uh, we're going to go through a li uh, some of this article together. Um, give my general thoughts, opinions, ideas on um, what they have so far. So first of all, we have an evolution of Origins AI. Um, I'm not sure if I've covered this on my channel. I know I've read it before. Um, basically, within Origins and Odyssey, uh, the AI wasn't all that great. Um, there is a specific dynamic system that they used in Origins, um, which was basically the NPCs had a day-night cycle, so depending on what time it was in that world, um, NPCs may be at different locations. You know, if you're going in to take down a fort, the commander, if he's um, at night, might be sleeping, or if he's during the day, he could be out and about. So they're just saying that um, it's building on top of that. It has also been said elsewhere, not necessarily in uh, this particular article, that um, they the AI is going to be a lot, uh, not tougher, but you're going to have a lot more like combat challenges, if you will. Um, and then as we scroll down, a new mission structure um, through cities, mainline, uh, game moved through countries, really narrative, double back, Valhalla will move players through England. Game structure is very different because a lot of player quests will emerge from a home base. So basically... Um, you're establishing a settlement in England, and so a lot of things are going to come out of that settlement or news from the countryside or what have you. Um, I'm assuming, you know, getting resources and things like that, I'm assuming you may have to go out and hunt animals and get meat for your settlement. You may have to go out and chop down logs to build a new barber shop or tattoo place or simply just new homes for added NPCs. Um... Oh, another thing on um, the evolution of the AI is they also wanted you to be able to, um, like, recognize your NPCs, your settlements. They all have a purpose there, and they recognize you because you are a community leader, um, if that uh, makes, makes sense. Um, also, in the new mission structure... Um, the quests won't always lead to violence. Uh, there were many times where the kings of England or the different kingdoms would make peace with the Vikings. Um, they are saying there are definitely dialogue choices that you could technically, I guess, choose to make where you would negotiate a peace. And there may be some characters that you can't do that at all, where all their only option they see fit is war. So that'll be a little bit interesting. Um, the newest bit of information that I could think of that was interesting is this. The controls aren't changing much. Now, not to worry, because, he says, uh, it will have similar control scheme to Origins and Odyssey. This originally bugged me, or not bugged me, but concerned me. Uh, specifically Odyssey, because I absolutely hated the combat in Odyssey. I hated having to use the D button to use specific attacks that you unlocked in your skill tree. I hated it. However, he continues, 
keeping combat options on the shoulder buttons, um, I'm hoping that that doesn't mean that the shoulder buttons are going to be counter like they were in the uh, console version of Odyssey. But keeping combat options on the shoulder buttons, I'm hoping that means that's more in relevance to Origins where um, you attack and you can block. I'm hoping that's what that means. Um, he mentioned there will be a new tool wheel. So the new tool wheel indicates to me that hopefully we won't be using the D-pad to select certain um, certain things or certain uh, skills. Because that was the biggest thing for me is I hated that. And again, we won't know anything. This is the most the new this is the newest amount of gameplay that we are getting or news about the controls at least that everybody actually cares about um and we will be getting that soon in june i think ubisoft has some form of event planned so in june we will get that info um moving on uh female male doesn't matter um, they do have some sort of storytelling way to explain that choice, and we won't know about it until the game comes out. No explanation um, for why we've barely seen female Eivor. It's just they've chosen to do the male version. I think it was probably to show off the customization of like the beard and the hair and tattoos and whatnot. Because female Eivor, you can customize her hair and tattoos, but a male Viking, you know, beard and and whatnot um progression is changing which hopefully means to premium means no premium xp boosters um fans didn't complain much about the character leveling system for origins but some odyssey players correlated the game's relativity slow accrual of experience points ubisoft sale of 10 uh raise xp by 50 percent uh da 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 um, how developers were thinking about post-release monetization, whether those XP uh, we've reflected a lot since Origins on progression and what that means for players. And we have a new take on progression in this game. We have more the concept of power, power that is gained through, let's say, the player gaining skills. So they're saying you're going to have more power through gaining skills, not levels. If that makes sense. Um, he said that the developers are trying to avoid any kind of big progression walls or anything that would keep players from accessing parts of the game they're interested in. Specifically said he didn't want people to hit a progression spike that would keep them from experiencing the narrative content. In other words, he wants players to be able to finish the game's main story without grinding or going on a ton of side quests. So this essentially means he wants you to be able to play this game from start to finish without doing any side quests. Which, honestly, that's how most games should be. Um, however, it I guess it depends, because if the developers feel like that you should go out and you should um, get all of these different locations and areas from side quests, maybe you should. It gives you a chance to explore a little section of their world if that makes sense. Um, you know, with within The Witcher, you cannot finish that game without doing any side quests. You have to do a good chunk of side quests in The Witcher 3, specifically, to, um, to go through to the main quests. So it's very interesting that here they're not focusing on levels, but they're like, you need to have certain skills, which make you more powerful anyways. And that makes sense in a, in a reality... Um, since however side quests if you want to do them it's a good thing that they have them there because if you go off and you go do a side quest the reward might be oh you get this npc added to your settlement now you can have wood for free because he's a wood chopper or um, you may end up getting money out of it for saving an npc's child from animals or from you know who knows um you may end up getting a new weapon or a new piece of armor that's been kept in the family and now it's either a piece of armor or it is a unique piece of armor that there's only one of that you can add to your right or left wrist or whatever um so that's good to hear and that's good to know 
that if I wanted to, I could just continue on the main quest. But it's also good, I think this is also good for streamers, and the reason I say that is because a lot of streamers don't necessarily want to spoil the main game when they first start. Or it may be that they just want to chillax and they've already played through the game, but they don't feel like spoiling it for other people. So they decide, eh, I guess I'll do some side quests. So that way, technically, this doesn't spoil the story if you're a streamer and you just want to sit back, relax, and play a game. Um, Ismail would only say that they're not talking about monetization yet and want to earn every single penny that you're going to pay for the game initially, which is how it should be done at Ubisoft. Uh, it can be an XP booster if there's no XP system. That's what remains vague. Uh, haven't unveiled their new power base. Take on progression. It'll involve a skill tree, but that's about all we know. Like I said, this skill tree I'm hoping is more like Origins, where they are passive abilities. Um, I don't. I I don't know how many times I can say that. Um, Ubisoft is definitely going to do that as a lot of their success, large increases in what gaming accountants call PRI, player recurring investment, players buying expansions, in-game items, boosters, and more. Um, it does technically, I remember this being in the news, it does technically um, have uh, loot, not loot box, in-game purchases. Um, but that's only because they have the expansion. Now, as I've said before, uh, if you are going to purchase a game, this is just my philosophy, but I think it's a good one to have. If you are going to pre-order a game, uh, that game should at least have two or three different trailers that have already been out. You know, like a cinematic or CGI one, um, some form of gameplay trailer and then um, a story trailer, and at least one or two demos. Um, Assassin's Creed Valhalla has two trailers, uh, one being a CGI trailer, one being the gameplay trailer. Um, I'm assuming we're going to get a gameplay demo in June when Ubisoft does their E3 knockoff, spinoff, whatever you want to call it. Um, June or July, I'm not sure which, which of those months. It's coming up soon. Um, so we'll see then, but again, if you're going to pre-order the game, I would personally wait because I'm excited for this game. However, the one thing that's holding me over on pre-ordering it is the gameplay demo, uh, colonization, da, 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 da. this is in, uh, one of the photos that was released. If it loads, I don't, oh, there it goes. As I've said before, dual wielding the axes, a flail of some sort, and a giant sword. And then it looks like shield and a hammer, which this awesome, this set looks awesome, armor set. Uh, Pandemic hasn't derailed the game. Um, there was a whole big thing about uh, Ubisoft saying it's not going to be as big or it's going to be as big as Odyssey. Personally, I would rather have a smaller game with more meaningful content than a large, huge open map like Odyssey or Ghost Recon Wildlands, where there's nothing to do in between the objectives. If you look at Ghost Recon Wildlands, there's like no life in between the big cities. It's all just emptiness. And it's just kind of ridiculous to cross the uh, open um, the open world. And then we have this last part here. Uh, late last year, I received a tip from someone I didn't know. Oh yeah, so basically the... Um, uh, what's called the editor of this story received a tip that this game was coming out and he asked Ismail about it and he didn't say anything about it. Um, so that was it. I will leave this article down in the uh, description down below. Um, it'll be the first or second link should be the first link. Um, if you want to go through and read everything that I did not cover um, I think I've covered a majority of all of the news that is out about this game. Um, let's see what is today. Today is Monday. Tomorrow is Tuesday. I will be streaming at 11.30 a.m. Central. Um, we will be covering Horizon Zero Dawn. Um, I did not get to play it last week because last Tuesday I woke up with a splitting headache. And uh, last Thursday was the Sony State of Play where we checked out Ghost of Tsushima. 
So thank you guys for watching. Um, if you're interested in any of those videos, uh, there should be a link, a pop-up link at the beginning of this video um, that will take you to that live stream. So thank you guys for watching, and uh, I will see you guys next time. Peace.